Hi everybody and welcome to the presentation of our paper Learning to Break Deeper Sexual Hash, the use case Neural Hash. Last summer, Apple announced its Neural Hash system for the detection of illegal material on user devices. Neural Hash is designed to detect child sexual abuse of material, or CSAM in short, directly on the user devices before the files are encrypted and uploaded to the iCloud service. While Apple promised to ensure user privacy and security, various critics arose very quickly. One major point of criticism is that Apple, after all, still scans the data on your device. The criticism went so far that people even went on the street and demonstrated against the deployment of neural hash. Finally, Apple cancelled its plans for neural hash and postponed the deployment indefinitely. However, client-side scanning is still discussed as a solution for crime detection. For example, very recently in the European Union. In our work, we investigated the risks of client-side scanning from a technical machine learning perspective in which neural hash acts as a real-life example. So let us start with a short introduction into client-side scanning. The basic idea is to scan files for legal content such as CSAM or the user device itself. Technically, for each file, a fingerprint or hash value is computed by a hashing algorithm. Hashes are fixed-sized binary strings, which we represent in the equivalent hexadecimal form throughout this presentation. Each hash is then checked against a database with known hashes from illegal material. In real hash, the database contains hashes from CSAM. Usually, the content of the database is encrypted, so the hashes are not publicly available. After checking each hash for a match, the possibly matching images are encrypted and reported to the server. If the number of matches exceeds a predefined threshold, a flag is raised and a message is sent to the authorities. In its core, neural hash relies on a deep perceptual hashing algorithm to compute the fingerprints. Generally speaking, perceptual hashing aims to produce similar hash values for similar content, which is different from traditional cryptographic hashing that computes strongly deferring outputs for small input changes. Deep perceptual hashing further uses neural networks to extract meaningful features from its inputs. The neural hash pipeline consists of three steps. First, the input images are resized to a fixed representation. Then, a neural network extracts features in form of a real valued vector. Finally, this feature vector is transformed into a binary hash by applying a locality sensitive hashing step. This is done by defining a random hyperplane for each hash bit and checking on which side of the hyperplane the feature vector lies. Mathematically, this is realized by a matrix vector product followed by applying a simple step function. So after clarifying the technical background of neural hash, we try to answer the question, how robust and effective is such a system? In our work, we basically investigated two adversarial settings, namely hash collision attacks and detection evasion attacks. In both settings, we have an adversary that is able to manipulate the content of a set of images. The adversary then sends these images to a target device on which neural hash is running. For the setting of hash collision attacks, the goal of the attack is to create an image that is then assigned a hash value matching one from the CSAM hash database. For the evasion attack, in turn, the image is manipulated in a way that its hash value differs from the hash of the clean image. Before discussing results, we want to dive a bit more into detail for our collision attacks. We assume that the adversary has white box access to the hashing algorithm, for example, by extracting the model from a user device. With this, an unlimited number of forward passes can be run, as well as a computation of gradients with respect to the model's input. We further assume that the adversary knows at least a share of the system hash database. While access to the real database might be difficult to gain, we assume and that is sad to say that it should also be quite easily possible to gather separate CSAM collection and computer hashes for them. Also, service providers and governments might have database access after all. We then first identify a target hash from a database that is most similar to the initial hash from an image we want to manipulate. We then compute a hinge loss based on the similarity of both hashes and update the image to move both hashes closer together. After hash collision is achieved, the manipulated image is sent to the user device where a flag is raised due to a hash collision with the database. 
In our evaluation, we use stock images as surrogate for CSAM and created a database with about 20,000 hashes. We then used 10,000 image samples as targeted images to be modified. Our attack successfully created hash collisions over 90% of all cases. Whereas the visual differences between the original and the modified samples were in strength, they often were rather small. Many images contain some patches of color, which are sometimes striking, but often hardly noticeable. We also show a visual result of an image from a Black Lives Matters protest as an input image and a random dog image for the target hash. As you can see, the visual differences are hard to notice. For example, the shirt of the girl in the front shows some color patch. However, the computed hash value changed completely and matches the one from the unrelated dog image. In a real attack, by distributing the modified images over social media, targeting certain groups such as Black Lives Matters, the supporters of these groups could be identified, monitored, and even pursued. A setting that is not necessarily far-fetched in states of injustice. In our second setting, investigating detection evasion attacks, we again assumed that the adversary has white box access to the hashing algorithm. However, access to the hash database is no longer required. The adversary then starts by computing the initial hash value of a clean sample and computes a negative mean squared error loss on this initial hash and the current hash value of the image. By updating the image accordingly, the adversary then tries to move the current hash value away from its initial value. When a certain distance between the hashes is achieved, the modified image is sent to the client device where no flag is raised. This attack basically enables an attacker to hide illegal content such as CSAM from detection by adding small perturbations to it. In total, we evaluated three different versions of this evasion attack using 100,000 image samples as input. Each sample is then perturbed until at least a single hash bit is flipped. First, our standard attack allows changes in all areas of an image, leading to a 100% success rate. We also investigated another attack, which limits the changes to the edges in an image, as well as an attack that tries to change as few pixels of an image as possible to achieve a hash change. On average, only 21.5 pixels needed to be changed to flip at least a single bit. All three attacks lead to high success rates with only slight image changes that are hardly perceivable by humans. In this example of Red Panda, changing a single pixel is sufficient to change the hash value of the image. We also investigated gradient free evasion attacks by applying standard image transformations instead of computing image specific perturbations with gradients. This allows us to analyze how robust the neural hash is to simple changes of an image. Please note that in this setting, the adversary does not need direct access to the hashing algorithm itself, nor any deep technical knowledge. A standard image editor is enough to perform the attacks. While we also investigated other transformations in our paper, we limit the presentation here to three of them. Please note that the reported normalized hemming distance describes the average percentage of hash bits flipped. For rotating an image by one degree, already more than 5% of the hash bits are flipped on average. Generally, all transformations adding some new content, such as black areas, lead to strong changes in the hashes. For decreasing the brightness of an image, neural hash is quite robust. However, increasing the brightness quickly flips the hash bits. It is also interesting that neural hash is robust against compressing images with a JPEG algorithm. We also want to point out that horizontally flipping an image changes also 29% of all bits, vertically flipping it even 37%. To further extend our analysis, we looked closer into the information that is contained in the hash values. For this, we first computed the hashes for samples from the ImageNet training split, which contains samples from 1,000 different classes. Since many ImageNet classes are quite similar, we also created a dataset consisting of 85 coarse ImageNet categories. After that, we tried a simple, fully connected network to predict the class labels based only on the image hashes. We then evaluated the classifier on the ImageNet validation split. As you can see, our classifier trend on 1,000 classes achieved a top one test accuracy of about 4%. Note that ImageNet is quite a challenging dataset and random guessing only achieves an expected accuracy of 0.1%. The results for the categorization model confirm that the hashes indeed contain information about the image content. And even though the hashes contain less information than the corresponding images, they should be handled with care in practical applications. An attacker with access to a user's image hashes might infer private information about the contents located on the device. 
This brings us to the lessons and implications that can be drawn from our work. Our experiments show that current systems, such as neural hash, are likely not robust against various attacks. Even simple image manipulations, such as provided by free-to-use image editors, are sufficient for performing evasion attacks. We have also shown that the hash values can be changed arbitrarily by adding small perturbations to an image. Accordingly, neural hash is not able to reliably perform its actual task, the detection of child sexual abusive material. While we only investigated our attacks in neural hash, we expect the results to also transfer to other deep perceptual hashing algorithms, since the underlying neural networks themselves are probably not robust. We also want to highlight that client-side scanning systems in general can be misused for malicious purposes, as demonstrated with our collision attacks. When manipulating images, service providers or governments can frame or monitor people by distributing modified images in certain social groups. Also, database manipulation could easily extend the range of the content detection. It is an open question how to assure that the databases themselves are not manipulated. But who should supervise such a system, after all? It is then natural to ask how such risks could be mitigated. One possibility is to add an additional server-side hashing procedure to double-check flagged images. However, this removes the promised privacy by client-side scanning. Also, it does not avoid database manipulations. Another first step would be to restrict model access to make gradient-based attacks unfeasible. But evasion attacks could still be simply achieved by image transformations. And model extraction attacks might be able to create a clone of the model, in which the attacks could then still be prepared. Altogether, from a technical and ethical viewpoint, we take the position that neural hash and related client-side scanning systems do not provide a safe method for detecting legal violations and therefore should not be deployed on user devices, since they are easy to manipulate, bear the risk of abuse and lack robustness. This said, we only presented our view from a machine learning perspective. We are happy to discuss your thoughts on this topic. So thank you for your attention and interest in our research, and we are happy to take your questions.